you write about coming to New York, which was in the 80s, and it was all unknown possibility, you know, and there's a lot of ways in which you write about the city that are interesting, um, because it's kind of nostalgic, but not entirely. I mean, it's not like you have this sort of rosy colored view of New York at that point. But I, it seems like an interesting part of what you're doing with the book is thinking about this whole idea of like Kim Gordon, musician, sonic youth, but you say like, I've never really thought of myself as a musician. You're an artist, a conceptual artist, a visual artist, and sort of figuring out what that means. And I wanted to ask you about, um, so what was that like so to be a visual artist in New York at that time um, and start trying to figure out what that would look like for you, um, sort of the people you were meeting and what that scene meant for you? Um, well, I mean, I, I, like a lot of people, did romanticize New York um, in terms of the Velvet Underground, mm -hmm. Uh, Andy Warhol, The Factory, and then I had other things like the Juds Judson Street Theater, or Judson Church, rather, with um, dancers like Ivana Rayner, who um, made films, and film was dance, and, you know, things that were kind of um, crossing different boundaries or genres, and I guess that's, in a way, what New York represented to me, and... Um, but when I moved there, it was, I mean, I knew a couple artists, conceptual artists, Dan Graham, Lawrence Weiner, and Dan turned me on to No Wave Music, and he would tell me, you know, go to Franklin Furness, uh, theoretical girls are playing or, or something. And um, so suddenly, like, I was, I went thinking I was going to do, be inspired by art, but I was really inspired by a lot of the No Way bands because mm -hmm. it seemed so free and it also seemed like, I don't know, like I, I don't know, it was just so exciting and I thought, I guess I could do that. <laughs> um, and you were already doing that, right? I was kind of blown away that when you were in York University, right, you, you did this kind of Flexus inspired band, Below the Belt. Right. Which is what got you the attention of people, I don't know about Dan Graham, but Mike Kelly and these kind of artists who had become friends. Well, yeah, we, I, when I was in art school, we made a band up for our media class, and it was um, with these two Chileans who, I didn't know it at the time, but they had, they'd been part of this um, kind of um, famous cult, prog rock band called the... <laughs> the Blops, <laughs> and um, and my friend Willie Wynett, who's a now a world-renowned percussionist, but um, and this Canadian girl and I, and it was kind of like a noise garage band, and we had one gig at the um, Ann Arbor Film Festival, and Mike, I guess, was there, but although I didn't meet him then, but he said it kind of inspired him to go back and start a garage noise band. And, I actually didn't know there was a name for what we did. It was just more like a um, kind of messy um, art project. Um, and, you know, so I got a taste of it. And um, I don't know, then I guess, I mean, like a lot of people, you know, even though, I mean, when punk rock happened, it kind of created this um, opening in the culture, like, um, where there hadn't really been anything, I guess, since the 60s. And um, so it was really exciting, and it kind of put a lot of questions in the air, and it was easy to get, kind of question what you initially had set out to do, although I did still always want to be an artist, but it, it kind of made it okay to somehow think you could play music, <laughs> even though you had no musical training or something, you know. Um, and which is why I don't think of myself as a musician, because it was really started in the spirit of, um, of post-punk, I guess, you mm -hmm. know. Or in the spirit of, it seems like performance, you said, like, it, it made you realize that you really liked performing. Yeah, performance and um, just kind of, exp you know, another means of expression. Yeah.